Bitcoin has just closed its first ever four consecutive red quarters in a row, guys. This is, of course, the most aggressive bear market and the longest bear market we have now officially been into. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the macro chart, such as a four-year cycle, as well as a variety of different indicators today, and of course, the short-term price action to discuss the next move in 2023. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you all having a fantastic day and happy new year to everyone. Another year down, 2023. Let's hope it's going to be a decent one for the markets. Now, today's focus is going to be on the macro chart, particularly the four-year cycle. We're going to be talking about what the four-year cycle is and what we expect to occur based on the four-year cycle going into 2023. We're also going to discuss the short-term price action, discuss where we think Bitcoin is going to go in the short term, and of course, the market data as a whole. Before we get into it, smash the like button, hit the comment button, and obviously, if you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. We do daily technical focus analysis, talking about the structure, talking about the data, talking about nothing less than all of the important, relevant, and key information you need to understand price action and, of course, technicals that are occurring on the charts. Also, go ahead and join our Telegram channel. You'll get access to that in the second link in the pinned comment. Updates, analysis, videos, information, news events, and so much more will be posted in here from today onwards, of course. So go ahead and get access to that. And if you're interested in our VIP channel, you can go ahead and get access to our trading channel with over 500 members. Uh, that is starting back up today. Let's go ahead and dive in and we'll start with the market data as usual. So as you may have already heard me talk about, Bitcoin has officially closed its first ever four red consecutive quarters in a row. This is the first time in history dictating or depicting, should I say, the longest downtrend Bitcoin has ever seen. In regards to downtrends, bear markets, what do you want to call it? This is by far now the longest and most aggressive, not in terms of percentage, but in terms of monetary displacement, meaning from the top of the last of the previous bull run to now where we are now, we've seen a significantly greater amount of money come out of the market than we saw within the last bear market. And again, the diminishing return model will reflect that as we become a larger and larger market cap, we're generally going to see more and more money flow out in bear markets, but the percentage return on the way down is going to be less and less. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Anyway, we have opened up quarter one red, uh, not to not too concerning guys it's only day one doesn't really matter the most important thing here is that four consecutive red quarters in a row moving on volatility is still horribly low absolutely horrid 1.45 percent you know we're seeing lows we haven't seen since 2017. this is historically low volatility for bitcoin and we're talking we've been here prior to 2017 quite a fair bit but post 2017 we've only tapped down to this 1.45 level a handful of times we're talking like four or five times at most so historically low volatility right now over a 30-day period and again with lowering volatility consolidation in price action decreasing volume we do expect the next move to occur to be quite an aggressive and explosive one whichever direction it's going to go I have a feeling it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. So let's go ahead and talk about the Bitcoin price action. But before we do that, of course, volume is very low. And again, liquidations are going to be low for that. So Bitcoin, what is happening here on Bitcoin? And excuse me, just fiddling in some stuff over here. Uh, we have, of course, dropped down from this uptrend support line. And we'll come back in just a moment and talk about Bitcoin in more detail. But you can see over here, we've dropped down below this uptrending support line. We're currently holding, you know, a decent amount of price action between and within this larger time frame VRPV chunk. Uh, we can see the POC level is sitting back at around 16,800. But we do have an increased amount of volume between that 16,800 to around 16,400-ish range. And that does extend across, as you can see, we've had a lot of support, a lot of price action within this range. We extend that range back upwards, this entire block over here. But below it, we see a lot more volatility going back in time, going back in history. There's a lot more volatility as we start approaching, you know, we're looking at 15,600 or even lower. We can see that there's a lot more volatility, a lot more rapid price action, a lot larger wicks. And again, a lot more just in general uh, volatility in that price action. We do expect that to occur this time around again. 
Looking at the VIPV, we can see it's steadily starting to decrease as we approach our 16,200 level. Again, representing that if we are pushing lower here, we will start to see a bit of volatility pick up and we should start to see the price action start to speed up as we approach 16,200 and the price action should speed up a lot as we lose 16,200 and head into our 15,000 range. We'll come back and talk about Bitcoin in just a moment. Let's talk about the broader markets. So of course the DXY is currently closed. It'll be opening up not too long from now. We can see a falling wedge structure here on the DXY. We are looking for a break out of this falling wedge structure to see any sort of reversal towards the upside. It is looking quite grim right now. We are very much in a downtrend on a smaller time frame, of course. And of course we are in a downtrend on a larger time frame as we've broken out of this rising expanding wedge pattern, which of course is a bearish structure. So waiting for a reversal point here, is what we're looking for for the DXY um, to see any sort of swing toward the upside. We will definitely need to be breaking out of this falling wedge structure. And more importantly, on a small time frame, we're going to be needed, we're going to have to reclaim some of these gray zones, these gray support resistance levels. We're looking at 104, we're looking at 105. Moving on, the S&P 500 and Dow Jones. Dow Jones is still within that neutral territory. Again, markets are closed right now, looking for a break over 3,500, uh, 35,000 to see it move towards the upside. And again, this downtrend should continue towards 32,000 if this does not flip. S&P 500, again, the downtrend is very much in play. Targeting 3,600 unless we can break above 4,100. That is when the trend should flip towards the upside. Next key rejection point, of course, 4,300 pushing past through there. We are in a uptrend. Dow Jones, S&P 500 looking quite similar. Bond yields, 10 year and two year government bonds. We can see a similar price action occurring over here. Again, we are in a uptrend now. We have had that crossover of the 50 EMA. The smaller time frame movers are pushing through and we have cleared these local lows on the 10 year. And of course, on the two year, we have pushed through our major horizontal resistance zone over here. So we are seeing an uptrend develop and we can expect these to continue upwards to about 4.6 and potentially even create a new high here on the 10 year. And of course, that will be potentially bullish for DXY. Let's go ahead and get back into Bitcoin. So short term price action, we are on a downtrend here. We do expect the price to move towards the downside. The downwards trend is the bias. So right now the bias is downwards as the trend direction is very much downwards. So you shouldn't be sitting here saying, I'm gonna take longs, it's gonna go up, because right now the trend is undoubtedly pointing toward the downside. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, this downtrend is going to inevitably always continue forever. At some point, the downtrend will break and the uptrend will initiate on the smaller time frame. I'm not talking about the broader markets, I'm not talking about the large time frame. We're talking about the immediate time frame right now, the immediate price action. Right now, we're in a downtrend. Right now, we do expect targets of 16,200. We do expect targets of 15,800 and 15,500. Now, here's the thing at what point does this downtrend break? And at what point do we flip the narrative and expect a swing upwards? Well, that is what we're going to talk about here because we've talked about the downtrend a fair bit. So we're looking for a break back above the POC level. And more importantly, we're looking for a break back above this downtrending resistance level we can see on the chart over here. This downtrending resistance was our downtrend that we've basically been in um, for a while now. You know, going back to the start of December, this is in fact our downtrend. This is our downtrending resistance. This trend line over here is the trend line that is keeping the price suppressed and moving sideways toward the downside. So breaking through that downtrend will initiate or confirm at least that the downtrend has in fact broken and the trend will have a chance to flip. So for our upside swing, we're looking for a break of this downtrend. Okay, we're looking for a break of the horizontal gray zone and of course a push over the POC. If that occurs, we can expect a swing up to these next horizontal levels. Every single one of these horizontal levels is a potential rejection point, a potential flipping point back towards the downside. For us to see any sort of larger time frame bullish price action, sorry, an alert is going off. We do need to see a swing toward the upside, of course. Um, and that will need to take place above this gray, uh, this red zone. So we're looking for a break above this red zone over here. And that of course is our June to November bottom. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's take a look at this. So the June to November bottom takes place from about 18,600 
to about 18,100. Those are our key resistance points on the charts right over here, according to our wicks and structural price action. Looking at the VRPV as well, we can see an immediate jump in the VRP above this level, indicating a significant amount of resistance above us, but again, a significantly, a significantly lower area of resistance support right over here, indicating, what does that indicate? It indicates that this is in fact a very strong resistance zone. Think about this, if you've got a significantly higher amount of resistance to support or historical price action above and a significantly higher amount of historical price action below, what does it tell you? It tells you that the price has spent significantly less time within this price range. Why has the price spent significantly less time within this price range when the price range over here has been like six months? It's because every single the price, every single time the price enters that range, there's so much resistance or so much orders in those levels that immediately the price gets reversed and continues in the direction it's going until it breaks. And so we saw the breakdown over here was such an aggressive breakdown, was such a strong resistance. This is in fact the strongest resistance on the Bitcoin chart. Looking for an honest, reliable, and accurate exchange that you can trust to trade on? Go ahead and sign up to BitGet with the link down below and join myself and all of our other VIP members and other members who trade on BitGet daily. There's a whole range of benefits and features you can actually get by trading on BitGet. These include no government regulations, meaning you can sign up from anywhere in the world. There's no KYC, 0% trading fees on spot, massively reduced trading fees on futures. It's one of the lowest in the game. And most importantly, access to their protection fund in case the exchange gets hacked, you can actually get reimbursed for your funds so you can ensure your funds are safe. Now, most importantly, if you do sign up with the link down below, that first link, you'll get access to two additional features. These include access to a reward center where you can get up to $4,163 in rewards and access to the Mega Whale exclusive referral link bonus discounts every other month we do bonus campaigns we get up to 10 percent of your trading fees or even you get a percentage of your trading fees refunded to your account as usdt essentially you get paid to be on the exchange that's enough guys we'll get back into the video but in fact if we go to the larger time frame and bring up that vrpv we can see for a sure right there it is right there okay let's go ahead and adjust this real quickly we can see it for sure right over here we're bringing the row size up you can see immediately how large that resistance is. The POC level, in fact, for the Bitcoin chart dating back to 2018 is sitting at that $19,000 range. This is the strongest area of resistance on the Bitcoin chart in the history of Bitcoin, in fact. Um, even if we expand this chart backwards, you know, going back to 2017, this is still the largest peak in the VRPV, indicating that this range is going to be that significant point of retest that we do need to flip over for this trend to flip as a whole. So what we're looking for, guys, in 2023, if we're looking for a bullish scenario, we do need to see a handful of things. And the most important thing we need to see is a break out of this falling earth structure towards the upside, which will facilitate a break of that POC level sitting around 19,100. That is going to be the most important price point to initiate the next move for Bitcoin for the upside. Now, breaking over that point is not gonna automatically magically turn us into an uptrend, but breaking through that point will confirm the downtrend has ended and we're having a situation that could facilitate a new uptrend. How will a new uptrend start? Well, we need to break through this area of resistance, which was this December 2020 point and this August 2022 pivot point. As you can see in the VRPV, as soon as we break through here, we do have a drop in volume. That should take us to our yearly low. And we'll talk about the yearly low when we talk about the four year cycle, but that yearly low is the point of which the macro uptrend actually kicks off. That is when the macro uptrend will initiate. That is when we'll start to see the four year cycle take place again for the upswing. Now, all of this being said, guys, we do have potential to go lower. And of course, like we said already, we do expect that short-term price direction to take us back toward the downside. And our downside targets were expressed, 16,200, 15,500, okay, or 15,800. And we don't expect this green level, this green zone, this 15,800 level to withstand or withhold another retest. If the price action actually does retest the zone, we do expect it to continue towards the downside. And our targets, of course, based on the price action over here, is this horizontal range between 13,900 
and 12,000 as the next target. That is the next logical target. That is based on what the charts are telling us. That is not my personal opinion. None of this is my personal opinion. I am simply analyzing and translating what the chart is saying. I think a lot of people would think, oh, wait, well, this is what you think. Just want to say, I don't align myself with personal opinions. I don't trade based on opinions. I am purely factual, purely data-driven trader. I focus on the technicals and the charts. And I don't care what I think. I trade that trade based on what it's telling me. So what it's telling me now is if we do lose this 15,500 level, we are going to 16,200. 16,200 historically is in a very strong support zone. We're most likely to push down to 15,800. If we do break into 15,800, we're going to be collapsing further to 13,900 to 12,000. So that being said, guys, you should be prepared for another continuation towards the downside. But of course, we do have those key reversal points in the chart that could tell us, oh, look, the price is actually flipping. We're seeing some uptrend develop. We should pay more attention. That doesn't mean the downtrend's not over. The downtrend's very much active, very live and well. But just blinding yourself to one side of the scenario is never a good idea. You have to be aware of both scenarios at all times and have plans for both scenarios. That is how you execute proper, well-executed plans. Let's take a look at the four-year cycle. So the four-year cycle, of course, is something that has been active for Bitcoin for quite some time. It's a very, very popular theory. It's been a theory um, that was heavily, heavily used, obviously, the last cycle to predict uh, the last cycle. And again, people are going to be using it this year to predict the bear market bottoms. And we've used it quite a fair bit. And it has, for the most part, held quite true. So if we take local tops or bull market tops or bull market bottoms, bear market bottoms, we generally see about 13 to 12 bars in price action. Okay, this is a monthly chart, so 13 months to 12 months in price action. Currently, we have seen Bitcoin execute its 13th month. This is going to be December. So the candle hasn't opened yet for, Janu uh, for January 2023, but we're currently going to be in our 14th month. So this is in fact the longest bear market we've ever seen. If we do reverse this month and actually push upwards here, um, before we create a new low, of course, there's a new low that the current low is actually in the 12th month. So right now we do have a chance to push upwards, but generally we don't really see that occur in a four year cycle. We generally see, you know, the price kind of create that low and then swing towards the upside. So what we're looking at here again, based on the four year cycle, the bull market will initiate once the price action breaks through the baseline on the Ichimoku cloud, which is this red horizontal wall, this slightly uptrending uh, resistance line that you can see, which is that baseline, okay? We broke through it over here, we broke through it over here. That is when the uptrend really kicks off. So the price time or the time range between the bottom and that breaking point is generally about 15 to 16 bars. So you can see it over here, it's about 15 to 16 bars. So assuming 15 to 16 bars from November, which is that bottom, we're looking at a range of about February, to March 2024 for the bull market to start to kind of kick off. That is what we're looking for. It doesn't mean the bull market is going to go parabolic there. It just means that is when it's going to really start to kick off. Now, assuming the bottom is in fact in December, we're looking at that same thing, but a little bit further. We're looking at around April 2024. So again, as you can see from this breaking point over here, we do generally see a 20 to 19 bar, 19 to 20 bar period between where that bull market starts, where that baseline actually breaks and where the top is in. So assuming that we have that 16 bar period from December, we're looking at about 19 to 20 bars. It's taking us to December 25, 25 to November 2025 will be the bull market. So we're looking at bull market initiating from April 24 to November slash December 2025. So quite a long bull market, a 19 month long bull market. Now the uptrend actually initiates once the downtrend is over. If you do look at the price action in the prior four year cycles, the uptrend initiates when the downtrend uh, has finished, when the bottom is in, we do have this entire period of uptrend, which again is around 35 bars, 35 months of uptrending price action. But again, the bull market hasn't initiated until we push through about half of that, about 16 bars. It doesn't mean, you know, the uptrend isn't going. The best time to get into the market, the best time to accumulate, the best time to make positions is during that 16 bar period before the bull market. So when the bull market comes, the prices are kicking off, everything's going to the moon, you're missing those cheap prices. So for 2023, if the four year cycle does hold, we're looking 
for that similar scenario. We're looking for our April 2024 bull market start. We're looking for a November 2025 bull market end. Now, another really interesting thing is the price points of which these bull markets actually kick off. So we look at prior cycles, what are the price points of which the bull market starts to kick off or we have more confirmation that the uptrend really initiates. If we look at the yearly lows for these prices in the prior bull markets, so we're looking at yearly lows in 2014 around 335, we can see yearly lows of 5,700, 5,800 in 2018 and of course we can see yearly lows and we're talking about bull market lows, right? Yearly bull market lows around 30,000 sorry, about 29,000 in 2021, 2022. These are the price points where if we break back above, this bear market trend, this downtrend has officially ended based on the macro price structure. So looking at this, every single time we break back above this level, we never ever, 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 ever close another monthly candle below it. So we broke here downwards, bear market is bear market bottom over here. We break upwards, we go into an uptrend, we never ever close a monthly candle below. Same thing, we break down, this is bear market bottom territory, we push upwards, we never ever close a monthly candle below. So the same thing's gonna happen again, I assume we're gonna break down, which we did, we're gonna go bear market bottom area, wherever that may be, we're gonna push through, when you break through this level again, we're never gonna close a monthly candle back below the area. And we're gonna continue until 2025 to new highs. So if you want the safest entry for Bitcoin, you should be looking for a yearly break or a monthly break over this 29,000, 28,000 level, which is a yearly low of the bull market before you get in for a very long macro position. Now, if we go back to this chart, that all makes sense because didn't we say at the start of the video that we need to break over this yearly low at around $30,000 for that bull market to really kick off? We did say that. And that corresponds to this current chart with the current price ranges and data ranges and volume ranges that we see over here. Now you can get in early, like I said, every single breakout over here is, init is an early initial breakout. A breakout over here tells us this downtrend is ending, we're going to potentially create an uptrend. It's not confirm there's no confirmation we're going to a bull market, but it's confirming that the downtrend is over, we could potentially create an uptrend. If you wanna jump in there, that is a good early entry. The next entry, we're breaking over 24K. We've, we've broken through this December high. We've broken through this August high. The uptrend has initiated. This is another really good entry. And finally, a really good entry is again at that 29 to 30K level where we're confirming that macro uptrend is actually initiated. I'm gonna leave the video, guys. If you've got any questions, leave them down below and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.